All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Have No Pity. We are getting ready for game number one of Special Cooperations versus Leave It to Weaver. Um, they're talking in chat. It looks like we're about to start it up. And here we go, finding server. So this is going to be game number one of a best of three, I believe. The RD2L Season 3 Playoffs Round 1. Um, if we take a quick look at the bracket, we can see that uh, right down here, special cooperate. Uh, you actually can't see my mouse. Um, the Quop and the Little Weaver, uh, those guys are playing off. Winner of this will face the winner versus someone versus Gremlins team. I questionable decision making. So, anyways, here we go. <clears throat> Everyone's loading into game right now. If I could just see this bigger, it would be better. Um, normally, I cast with a co-caster. I like having someone else to talk to and shoot the shit with. But today, I'm going to be solo casting this. Middle of a Sunday. Uh, hard to find people to pull in. Everyone's out busy doing stuff. So, you'll get to listen to my sultry voice for another three hours. Or two hours. We'll see. Uh, we see the Radiance ban. special cooperation gets first ban. Immediately ban the Slark. So... Dyer's ban. I cast a game this morning where Slark did quite well. Uh, he's kind of an annoying snowball hero. We're going to see him banned out pretty quickly. Uh, by the way, I really like the icon for special cooperations. Leave it Weaver does not have their icon loaded. Unfortunate. Dyer's ban. So we see immediately the uh, Lich ban. Uh, great uh, laning hero to kind of shut down the other team, get experience in your favor, just kind of win a lane. Then the Visage ban by special cooperations. Uh, great tri lane support hero. Ten uh, people to still go. love to play him, even though the tri lanes are kind of dying off a little bit. Five seconds. <clears throat> reserve time. We see Leave It to Win Weaver eating into the reserve a little bit for the second ban. Uh, and it's going to be the Death Prophet. Uh, hero Radiance that's seen a ban. lot of action in the RD2L. Uh, great pushing hero, kind of wins the mid lane. Not quite as hard as OD, but has a little more push potential. So we see special cooperations with the first pick, and what's it going to be? I'm not sure. Could be just about anything. Uh, they could pick up Crystal Maiden. the Crystal Maiden. Okay, so Die this is pick. a very common pick when people don't want to tip their hand. Solid support. She can jungle. She can try lane. She can roam around and try to get kills. Not a very long-range initiation, but still a very good support. And now they put the ball and leave it to Weaver's court. What are they going to do? They're thinking about it a little bit. Ten seconds. Ten seconds to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Five seconds. And they're going to... Possibly eat into a little bit of the reserve here. Nope, they're going to go with the Venomancer. This is a great pushing hero. Uh, and just kind of a great slow tri-lane hero. He doesn't have a stun, but his slow is very good. His damage over time is also very good. And for the second pickup, what's it going to be? And you can also play Venomancer mid. You can play him, like I said, in a tri-lane. Very flexible hero. So both teams going with flexible heroes. Venomancer a bit more flexible, but Ten Crystal Maiden less go. telling of what you're going to do. Five seconds. Five seconds. Reserve time. And here they go into the reserve a little bit. Uh, we could see the second support if they really don't want to tell the other team what they're doing at all. And that's exactly what we see. We see the Rubik come out. Uh, nothing to steal yet really um, radiance ban we see the abaddon pickup by special cooperations this support very strong support it's also a support that some people just like to play he can break uh, he has that kind of purging effect with his shield he's Dying good for diving ban. towers early he's got good heals tanky by nature so it's kind of a good support to pick up both teams with two supports right now Pop maybe a solo mid from the venomancer we see the marana ban, ban out and the <laughs> Weaver ban out. So leave it to Weaver. Does not want to leave anything to the Weaver. They're going to ban it out immediately in the second round. And we see the Marana ban out. Marana, good Ten mid, good off go. lane. You can do just about anything with her. Five seconds. 
Um, and also a good situational hero. Maybe leave it to Weaver scouted it out. Certain people love Reserve playing Marana, time. so if, if you know that, you can kind of ban it out early. And still waiting to see what they're going to pick up here. About a minute and 30 left. Uh, they're going to ban out the OD. Dyer's there you go. So one of those other really strong mid heroes. And then we see the Dyer's Bristleback pick. ban. Uh, he's been getting more and more popular recently. He's just a very strong laning presence. He can, has a great slow and good early potential. And you can't really dive into him because of Quill Spray. And so now we wait. We're going to see what Leave It to Weaver picks up. Both teams really haven't shown their hands at all. So I'm still waiting Damn to see what we end up go. seeing here. It could be just about, like I've said a few times now, just about anything. They seconds. can pick up their mid. Uh, I'm guessing they're going to pick up their laning carry. I uh, know they pick up Dragon Knight. So oh, this could be a mid, could be a laner. And Viper, Die the immediate pick. pickup. This is like the last bastion of of painful to play against mid heroes uh we have the od band out we have the death prophet band out but they pick up the viper so really annoying hero to deal with honestly if he picks up corrosive skin early you can't harass him if he picks up the orb early he harasses you uh very good range nice cast animation nice attack Damn animation is what i meant to, to say go. five seconds And leave it to Weaver. I, I, I wonder. Reserve time. I wonder what their strategy is going to unfold into here. They have the possibility of an aggressive trial lane with the Venomancer slow, the Rubick lift, and the Dragonite stun. You can do a decent amount of damage. They're about level two with the Rubick's ult and Dragon, or not old Rubick's nuke and Dragonite's nuke. That's something. Also, we should mention that the Leave it to Weaver lineup is very pushy. They have a Dragon Knight's ultimate, which does a lot of corrosive damage to towers. And we have Venomancer with his wards. So this is still a pushing lineup, it seems, from Leave it to Weaver. Or something that they want to engage in the mid game. Special cooperations really can do anything. And we see the Luna pick up. Luna also very good for pushing with her Glaives. Uh, once she gets some farm, she gets that BKB up. She gets a Manta style up. She becomes tanky enough to survive and just runs in and blows up team fights. So I think this is going to be a pretty mid-game centric pushing lineup from Leave It to Weaver. We'll see if Special Cooperations is able to slow it down. They might pick up... Um, well, it's hard to say. You don't want to pick up a Pugna because Venomancer's wards are not affected. Uh, and, you know, Dragon Knight's just a pusher. They pick up an Alchemist, so it looks like they're going to go more Dyer's for the farm band. game. And I like this. If they can survive the push from Leave It to Weaver... Uh, the Alchemist combined with the Abaddon and the Crystal Maiden can try lane very nicely. Viper will still win mid lane, I think. And they could be set up uh, pretty well going into the late Ten mid game to, to the late late game. They're just going to have to survive through Five this seconds. initial push from these teams. Reserve time. So we got 45 seconds left in reserve. They ban out the Night Stalker. Interesting choice. And the Clockwork ban. So they were expecting Dyer's Clockwork dead. off lane. Uh, Timbersaw is still there if they want to pick up a Timbersaw or something similar to that. Uh, I think they're expecting a Tri-Lane Luna. Bounty and Bounty Hunter is going to be the pickup. So Bounty Rain's Hunter is going to be their off laner. Uh, it's going to give them gold and a little bit of roaming potential. Honestly, I don't know exactly how he fits into this lineup. Um... He can go around and try to get some kills, but he's not going to integrate well with the pushing. But we'll see how it plays out. Special Cooperations, they need a, a probably an offlaner, honestly. So they could pick up the Timber. They could pick up Ten seconds to uh, go. Windrunner. They could pick up a lot of things here. Five seconds. And they have a lot of reserve, reserve time left, so they have plenty of time to think about this pick. And they might just want to hold on to the reserve time and try to see if they can find something, uh, discuss some strategy here, try to figure out how Silencer. they want to start the game. Silencer is going to be, so they're going to Viper in the off lane, Dyer possibly, and, and Silencer in the mid. It doesn't really matter. They can go either way. There's going to be levels and farm for both of them. Jay is going to go mid. I've seen him play mid pretty well. He's, he's a pretty solid player. I assume he's going to go mid. Maybe he won't. Um, 
So here we are picking their heroes. Uh, this should be an interesting game. A lot of push power out of Weave It to Weaver. Uh, a lot of farming power and uh, lane control out of special cooperation. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Ten seconds to ten seconds. Someone's pinging somewhere. Nothing in the chat. Five seconds. All right. Here we are. In the Radiant, we're going to see Jay playing the Viper. Please Not sure where he's going one. yet. Trektus, the captain, playing the Abaddon. We see Demigod playing the Silencer. Parabear playing the Crystal Maiden. And Valms playing the Alchemist in the safe lane. And it looks like it's going to be Silencer mid and Trektus. Oh, they're going to duel here. Kind of makes sense. I don't know why I kept being obsessed with the uh, tri-lane thing. Meanwhile, on the dire side, we see a tri-lane is coming out. The tri-lane I predicted, the Rubik, Venomancer, Luna tri-lane. They're going to be tri-laning into an Abaddon, which is going to be very difficult to get kills with, especially since the uh, shield is able to purge off those uh, disables. We see on the long lane, we're going to see Kiloas, the captain, playing 30 seconds the bounty go. hunter. Predictably in the long lane. And Invaders is going mid, playing the Dragon Knight. Let's take a look at this set real quick. I do like his sword. but uh, I like his shield better. Not a bad set. Kind of a Last cool thing. Spirit. I'm going to pop out real quick. Sets are half the fun. Silencer has an interesting set. He looks kind of like a... And they're off. I don't know what he looks like. All right, so here we go. Battle points will not be awarded for this match. Horror of horrors. All right. So this mid-matchup is going to be between Silencer and a Dragon Knight. Silencer should be able to get plenty of farm here. Uh, Dragon Knight should probably, probably be able to farm pretty well. Uh, Silencer is just kind of annoying. Yeah. And he's going to level up that uh, Breathe Fire first to try to get some last hits. The trial lane top, they want to get an early kill on this Viper. And the Viper is able to outrange the Luna. So if they play this carefully, they should be able to get some, some farm and some harass out of Jay. The Lift comes out here. They're going to try for it now. They're gonna, they do get the shield on him, but they get the slow as well. I don't know if they're going to be able to kill him here. Uh, Kissig's taking a lot of damage on that Luna. They do get some first shots blood. out. That is the first blood. Goes to Rubik. Uh, Katsu's taking some damage. They're going to get chased down by Trektus. They might be able to... Oh, and the shield's going to pop and kill him. Actually, he's going to turn around and try to get Rubik here as well. Um, he might pay for it. In fact, I think he's going to pay for it, and he goes down to the Luna. So... I don't know if I love that dive. He ends up giving a kill over to Kitsigs on the Luna there. Uh, Tri-lane, uh, two for one right now. Uh, Kitsigs out too far. His supports are not here. He has to be very careful. The shield's out. That shield damage could kill him. He throws him back. Is it not able to get us on Trek but it doesn't really matter. Yandora might go down here. They have to be very careful. They're very squishy. Uh, they had to send their other support all the way back to base. Or no, he died. Excuse me. So all, already we see... Uh, Two, three kills coming out of this top lane. Meanwhile, bottom lane, uh, Valms is just, you know, farming. Grievel's greed. Uh, we see the Crystal Maiden jungling, so they're going to get a little bit more out of the Crystal Maiden than just the trial lane support, or dual lane support. Silencer being extremely annoying to this Dragon Knight. Uh, able to keep him down pretty well, but we're going to go back to top, because this is going to be where the action's at. Uh, supports are moving too far away. We see uh, Yanara grabbing the haste and thinking about going mid. Um... There is no ward here for the Radiant. Um, but Silencer's playing pretty careful. There's not enough mana, and Dragon Knight did not get a stun. He's going to run top with Invis and Haste. And they're going to go for another kill here. They don't see him. Uh, if Venomancer can get in the right position, they're going to be able to kill. I assume they're going to go for Jay again. And he's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Uh, they're going to go for Jay. They are. They're going to pick him up. He's going to get shielded. Venom oh, this is the Gale, but they are going to get Trictus with the Gale. Actually, this is a good decision. They're able to take down Trictus while the shield's on Viper. And that's going to be another kill for Venomancer. 
If we take a look at the kills, it's one for uh, Rubik, one for Luna, and one for Venomancer. One for all of them. Last it's wise, uh, however, Luna only at nine, whereas we see 14 with greed on Valms. So he's able to do pretty well. Uh, Don't Lose Your Way is going to take a hit here. He might be able to kill her. In fact, he is going to kill her with the Shikran. A lot of damage coming out of down here. And that's just level 1 Shuriken and level 1 Janata. So we're able to get a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a... Uh, something out of this off lane. Which is good. Uh, mid lane... Uh, we see in the last hit battle... Pretty even, honestly. A uh, little bit of advantage to Silencer. And he is extremely annoying. He's actually out of mana. Uh, top lane... Silt, you know... Anything could happen at any point, but we see that the Venomancer is over, thinking about pulling at 53. Uh, there's no wards here to try to keep everyone safe. So, it's the Wild West up here. Mid lane, um, Demigod out of mana, using all of his glaives. Uh, <laughs> both these heroes kind of out of mana and just kind of trying to last it. We see the pink come out on Katsu. He doesn't get the stack. Curious as to what he was doing over there. Um... <laughs> I love this little ward. Storm Spirit ward, is that what it is? It's pretty cool. Um, Jay and Shrek 2 have to be very careful here. Jay is being kept down a little bit. Um, he's got 12 last hits, including a ward, so not that many compared to the 20 of Luna. So Luna's able to do pretty well in this lane. Uh, the difference is that Alchemist with Greed is at 23 last hits. Uh, that's a good amount of last hits. Um, the trailing up here... No. Very careful. I like that Rubik set. Um, just getting those last hits. Farming it up. 6.78 style. Boop. Alright, so this is going to turn into a more of a farm game. SQ has realized they have to be very careful down here. Mid lane. Uh, a lot of damage coming out on Invader. On uh, Yeah, Invaders. But he's got a bottle. He pops his haste rune. He'll be fine. Both these players playing very carefully in the mid lane. Um, he's <laughs> denying this uh, alchemist. Uh, and he's going a greedy build. It's going stun and uh, Grievous greed. Nothing in um, acid spray. So this is a farming alchemist, not a team fighting alchemist. We see 26 last hits up. Ooh, nice courier. Uh, and we see uh, wards right here for both teams, but that's that's really. The only vision they have, the second ward for each team is down. It looks like they didn't get one placed. We see the soul ring up in Abaddon, so now he's going to be extremely annoying. We see a smoke coming. They're going to come mid and try to get a kill. Try to break apart this mid lane, because right now it's just kind of a farm fest. 24 for Silencer, 22 for uh, the DK. They're going to see them pick up that double damage. They have to know now. Uh, we see Demigod backing, getting very low in the lane. He knows that that was a mistake to pick up that DD, because you just, you just gave away your gank. Um, meanwhile, top lane, they know they can go. They know they're not there. So, uh, Kitsig has to back up K Stiggs, is I guess what it is. K Stiggs has to back up immediately. A little bit of a misplay there to grab that double damager. And I know it's tempting when you're going for a gank saying, oh, I need that extra damage, but you need to just be in position. Meanwhile, this mid lane's still just, like I said, a farm fest. Denied. <laughs> Bummer. Disarmed. Well, bottom lane, another hit on the uh, Crystal Maiden. Uh, they get a freeze on him. I don't think they're going to be able to kill him, though. They don't have any... Uh... Oh, but he gets the stun. That's hilarious. He got to back up for that, but he's going to get a kill on Pear Bear. Janata, there it goes. Janata, Shuriken Toss, kill. Track kill, too. They need a dust down here. I don't think they pick one up yet. Midas on Alchemist. So Al Alchemist is going Midas and Grievel's Greed. This is just... He's going to farm. And I think this is the right decision. They're doing okay in this top lane. They got 16 last hits on the Viper. Uh, they're able to keep at least Luna not farming ideally. She's at 34 with 36 in the bottom. So they're actually... And if we take a look at net worth, we're going to see Alchemist is ahead, followed by Luna. And the Bounty Hunter with that track gold is going to be able to keep up. Bottom lane, uh, we see the farm fight going on. Mid lane, we see same thing, just farm fights. Man, that's a lot of damage. He's got to back up. So let's take a look at the graphs now. XP graph about 1,000 for WVR, which is surprising. 
honestly, because they have a tri lane. So you'd think, I guess they're getting the same amount of experience. Um, and there haven't been many, but they were trying to rotate mid and failed, so. Well, I'll take a look at the goal graph. Sorry for my camera work. Uh, about a thousand. Also pretty even. This game, this game very passive so far. We saw a flurry of activity in the top, and then, and then nothing. So, five kills, but not a whole lot of advantage to show for it. I'll take a look at levels. I forget which one that is. E hero level. Uh, levels uh, getting a little more out of their Rubik, but the supports Somebody's are honestly pretty good. Bounty, Bounty Hunter gets Silencer. I'm sorry I missed that completely. But they're going to try to get invaders here. Uh, they're not going to be able to get him. Slow TP. The Crystal Main moves up. Bounty Hunter does rotate and get a kill there. I assume it was a track kill. So This is why I need a co-caster. I can't operate my, my uh, graphs and look at the map at the same time. Uh, Jay is now alone top, and he knows he has to be careful. This trial is still, still, it's even more incredibly dangerous. Um, whoop, and we see Rubik moving down, trying to get a lift. Does not get a lift. Gets an offensive ward, which is good. Um, the last hit's doing okay for the Luna, but now they've left Valm's alone bottom, and he's just farming up a storm. We see Bounty Hunter TPing in. I uh, guess a track on him. Okay. Um, we see him pop the stun. Bounty Hunter's going to know. Here comes a stun. Just, I guess, for harassing. Mid lane, uh, Demigod's still just farming up the silencer. Uh, he looks like he's going to go for... Uh, I don't know what he's going to do. I guess... Oh, that's for his... Uh, of course, his boots. Top lane, we now see three heroes for uh, SQ, but four heroes for Weaver here. Um... The ping comes out. There's no ward over here, so they're not going to be able to see. Gale's ready to go, but no ultimate yet on Venomancer. Low level, honestly. If take a look at here levels again. Venomancer bottom with only three. Um, Move on see level eights. Uh, the levels are pretty even. Um, last hit's honestly pretty even as well. Uh, the Viper's a little behind, honestly. Um, Die as mid tower won't last. We see, still longer. see three top. They need to do something with these supports or rotate them somewhere else. I think they're just trying to keep Jay safe, but he's still not able to farm. Um, mostly because of this ward here. They know that the supports are there and they're playing very carefully. Oh, that? I missed. I missed Bounty Hunter killing the Alchemist, and he's going to run away. They don't have a dust on the silencer, so they're not going to kill him. They're not going to kill him. He's going to follow the silencer. He should check and see that the the. Double damage is bottled. If he pops out of Invis here, Radiant he gets a track. They, they're going to get the right stun now. for Dragon Knight. And this is going to be a lot of damage coming out. And Sounds is going to go down. Five in a row. How about that? Beautiful play. Beautiful rotation. Dragon Knight being aware, rotating in there. And now we see 1 to 8. We see the kills going even more in favor. Um, Radiance mid towers coming up. Having the Alchemist die was pretty bad. He needs, he needs a big gold advantage because that's really what he's trying to do here. It's just. Get more and more ahead. Radiance mid towers getting banged up. Take a look at net worth. Uh, Alchemist still trouble. leading, but not by enough. You should be leading. if he's going this greedy, his net worth should be far ahead. And we see him sitting with a Midas. He needs to use it. He needs to keep keep that Midas. There you go. Radiance. Um, we see drums. I like this. We see a drums out on the bounty hunter. This is a good choice for this uh, mid game yes, aggression, which they want to put on, and they need tower. to put on aggression now. Uh, we see. Uh, Hellboard coming bottom for Bounty Hunter, he, but Valms is going to be able to... Oh, we see the drums. Is he going to go for a kill here? He is, and he might be able to get it, honestly. We see the stun come out, but that's not going to be long enough. He's going to get a Janata and a uh, Shuriken. That's it. He's going to be able to take down the Alchemist. And this is bad. The Alchemist is out farming a little too far. Um... With no support in, in tow. And the Bounty Hunter is doing a lot of damage. He's got that drums. He's got the Orb of Venom to keep him slow. And the boots. The uh, phase boots. So, a decent damage coming out of this Bounty Hunter. I'm surprised with the amount he's able to keep down the uh, the Alchemist. And now, if Pear Bear goes out too far, he's going to die. Uh, top lane. Uh, <laughs> the Rubik is keeping Jay at bay. Because he gets lifted, he's dead. We see the pull by Katsu. I'm surprised he's not up there getting... Uh, Getting some farm. I don't really know. I guess he's rotating mid. Bounty Hunter is just trying to be annoying now. So this is their strategy. They're going to use the Bounty Hunter to keep the other team on their toes. Um, while trying to get uh, tri-lane advantage. And Yandra needs to go for this. He doesn't see him. 
Silencer is double damaged over there. He's got dust. Oh, he pops out. They both see each other, but he knows from the aggression now that there's something going on. He knows there's another hero here. A uh, bounty hunter rotating in behind, and they are going to try to get a kill again. Radiance mid towers. Coming Meanwhile, off. Dragon Knight with a push mid, and this is the mid game push they need. They need to keep uh, this Dragon Knight aggressively attacking the towers, Radiance getting his farm up. We up. see the uh, corrosive breath, 20 damage a second. Top, we're going to see a dive. Uh, he gets a steal. What does he steal? He steals Viper Strike. Of course, it's a free steal. We get the silence though. This is a big silence. They might be able to get two here. Uh, Kitsig's going to pop his ult, but it's too late. And he actually heals up Trictus. Uh, he needs to get back here. Uh, we see Bounty Hunter coming in from the back. Demigod goes down. Uh, Bounty Hunter gets there just in time, and he's going to be able to get three kills, it looks like. Wicked sick. And he goes down. Pear Bear's there, but you don't want to get close to that. So this Bounty Hunter... 7-0. and oh, We see him topping the charts, and this is the X Factor right now. This guy is what's making this game go well. And it's funny, because that's the one hero that I questioned in the early game, but his rotations have been fantastic. He understands that he obviously understands the hero very well. He understands what his damage is. He understands what his weaknesses are. And the big thing is, uh, SQ has been splitting up a little bit too much, I think. They've been trying to get this farm on their uh, Alchemist, but with no supports around. So he's got a Midas and Grievous Greed, but if you look at net worth, he's barely, barely beating the Luna. And Luna gets her BKB. That's a big item for her. So now we see two top. We see uh, <laughs> Invaders just started jungling. He got that mid tower down. So now, you know, he doesn't really have much to do mid. It's time to just go into the jungle. We see Kotsu at level six, finally. So he's got his uh, Poison Nova up. Top Luna is leading the last hit board, and the big thing is she hasn't died. If you look at kill deaths, we see Alchemist has died twice. Luna is killed twice, so that kill difference is what's keeping her ahead of the Alchemist in net worth right now. We should see the Alchemist start to pull ahead a little bit, and actually he did. He's up 400 gold now. He was only up 200 about a minute ago. So, uh, Weaver is pretty much exactly where they want to be right now. Actually, they've gotten so much out of this bounty hunter. Um, and they actually forced Valms into the woods, which is not terrible, but... Um, and he's going to go Shadowblade. Um, I like this, although, I mean, it's good for initiation. It's not good for escape because they have a bounty hunter. They're going to get the stun there, and if they can get this kill, this is going to be big. Oh, they get the silence too. He's not going to be able to go invis, but they might not be able to get him. And in fact, he's going to live. He bottles up, and uh, last word's going to pop on him, but not enough. Tower. That would have been a big kill to get, but they're not able to get it. Bounty Hunter, too escapable. We see uh, Shadowblade up on Dragonite, too. He's going to go in and stun the Crystal Maiden, going to kill her immediately. Uh, Trek 2 tries to get the heal. He needs to shield himself, but it's not going to matter. His ult goes off. Um, Jay is too far forward. If he got stunned there, he was dead. He was just dead. Um, Luna ult is up. So we see Invis. Venomancer is not going to pick it up. He's just going to ward. Uh, D-Wars. I love these wards, by the way. What are they? Invisibility. What is this? It's a cool-ass ward. Uh, see, anyways, top. We see a Dragon Knight pushing as usual. Um, they're getting towers. They're doing what they need to do. And they're getting extra out of this Bounty Hunter. So Bounty Hunter is going to go. He can kill Demigod by himself. Um, Valm's TP's out um, because they hear the poof from Bounty Hunter. The Radiant got one last top tower. He cancels the TP. Oh, no. Demigod's in trouble here. The Shinada hit takes away a third of his health. He gets the last word on him, but he's just dead. He's just dead. Uh, last word, not enough damage. Eight in a row for Bounty Hunter. This is getting ridiculous. They're going to four-man now. Bounty Hunter's just going to roam the woods, make sure they can't farm. This is looking bad for SQ. Let's take a look at the graphs. I haven't looked at those in a while. 6,000 for Weaver. Uh, in the gold and 6,000 in experience at 16 minutes. So they're doing quite well. Uh, space created for this bounty hunter. Uh, he can walk in there and kill Pear Bear. Like if he walks behind this tower, she will die to a Janata and a Glaive. I mean, 600 hit points. That's nothing. She's bought all support. I and mean, she has a wand, but a wand doesn't matter if you just die. <laughs> uh, Achilles in range of the tower. Slight misplay. 
Um, <laughs> this alchemist is stuck to farm the jungle now because there's nothing else he can do. He can't go out because this bounty hunter is so dangerous. And let's take another look. These supports have been fantastic. We see wards all around here. We see vision all through here. We actually see, you know, not double wards, but they're really concerned about vision through here. Uh, the dire are. I would actually like to see them put a ward here because that would let them gank even harder here. And honestly, Radiant has not been good. They have no wards up right now at all. Uh, I don't know if we can see any wards in the inventory. I don't know. Can I check inventory by going like this? I can. They have one in stock and they just don't have them placed. We see the smoke from the Crystal Maiden. And again, they need to kill this bounty hunter. So much gold waiting there. Four bottom. Uh... They're gonna. This is the time. It's gonna be the Venomancer push into the into the tower, and it's just gonna melt. Just gonna melt. Right uh, Bounty Hunter, one of double damage. Towers. He could kill demigods so fast. They actually dust. They think Bounty Hunter's there. That was a good guess, um, but Bounty Hunter is not there. Now your dust is on cooldown. They're four manning, so they're losing a lot of experience. Valves is way right, too far out. He's just tower. dead. He's he knows he has to farm, but instantly bad. dead. You can't walk through here if you have no wards, my friend. So we see a very large contrast in warding between the two teams. Um, and part of that is because of net worth. I mean, 1 in 15, you're going to get a lot of money on your supports. Although we see... Uh, I'm not even going to look at last hits anymore. They don't matter. I'm going to look at net worth. Net worth, Dragon Knight, and Luna has finally surpassed the Alchemist. Top um, they're trying to chase him down here. They need to get a kill, but if uh, Bounty Hunter's coming, if Bounty Hunter gets here... There's no tower here. They can't get out. Uh, Luna is now left alone to farm and push. Um, top towers taking hits. And I think this engagement might go badly. They don't have a gem, uh, so they're not going to see the bounty hunter and the dragon knight coming in here. Demigod's Radiant's just dead. He's just dead. Instantly shape. dead. Somebody's cooking. How about it's a that? big loss, and it's not looking good for SQ. We see the Luna rotate out. Uh, yeah, Elgato. Regeneration. If only you had the Super Gato. So let's see, what else is there to talk about right now? We see a 1 in 16 team. Usually that's impossible to Trouble come back. If we take a look at the gold, 10,000. XP, 10,000. Um, so how did it end up here? Let's try to talk about this. So, uh, honestly, the reason that this game is like this currently is this guy. It's the Bounty Hunter. Nine and eight, no, excuse me, on the Bounty Hunter. There goes Radiant's bottom tower. His kills early game, just by understanding his hero, understanding the strengths and weaknesses of the other team, were great. He's able to pick off Crystal Maiden a few times. He was able to kill the Alchemist a few times. He did very well with that. And then he just started roaming. He got kills on Demigod Silencer. He was able to... I think he, I don't even know. He might have gotten kills on um, the Viper as well. Although the Viper just was sitting top trying to get farm. Um, I don't know if the dual lanes were a great decision because you need they needed a tri lane to compete against the very strong tri lane of the other team. Either that or just throw one hero up there. Throwing a dual lane against it was meant that they weren't able to get a lot out of it. <laughs> These wards are awesome. Love them. I want them. Oh, man. All right. So this is going to be a roach attempt. This is the right call. Some people are like, oh, why don't they just win the game? Because this is the playoffs. Careful is good. They're going to get the Sages. They're going to put it on the Luna. And they're going to push mid. Dyer's top tower. You know the drill. I expect. They might go bottom. But honestly, it makes worse. Let's go mid. And there they go. We see the defense call. Um. The Luna's ult is up. Dragonite ult is up. They're going to teleport top. I don't really know why they don't just push. Um, and actually, Valms is here. He's stuck farming the enemy jungle now. Uh, he's going to get tracked, and he's going to die. Kill, track, right-click, stun, boom. How about that? That's the problem with going Shadowblade. I mean, I understand why he went Shadowblade, but it's... It's only useful for initiation if the other team has a bounty hunter. Especially if the other team has a bounty hunter who's 8 and 0. Oh. And he went BKB. He doesn't even have a damage item other than drums. So, 
I assume he's going like MKB or something next. I don't know what he's going to go next. Maybe he'll go Daedalus just for the alpha damage. They're going to take the last outer tower here. Um, they're going to take it without a fight, honestly. Dragonite isn't even here. Where is he? He's walking One into the Roche pit. For the Radiant. Oh, he's selling things. They don't even need him. They're going 4v5 here. Um, and I can tell you, this game has got to be so frustrating for SQ because... Really, the the play wasn't that bad. The lanes weren't set up. I, I would have set them up differently, but the lanes weren't set up that bad from SQ. Uh, these guys are obviously in the playoffs, so they know what they're doing. But when you get one guy that just starts to get farmed like that, starts to control the game like he did, and Thomas is going to go down again. This is about that? just too bad. This guy is controlling the game, and there's not a lot they can do about it. 1 and 18. I almost think... They're not calling GG just to lengthen the game out a little bit. If they get a team wipe here, but, I mean, again, if you look at gold, 15,000, 15,000. Net worth is going to be, oh, man, just huge net worth advantage. The Alchemist is the only one who's even remotely close. The Silencer has almost nothing. The Viper is incredibly poor. He has a mech, and that's pretty much it. He has brown boots. So, I. If they come back from this, this is there's going to be a all ten of the top ten plays this week are going to come from this game because I just don't see I don't see it. Oh, they're going to go for bounty hunter. He's invis. Do we have a dust? No dust. Oh wait, he just popped out. Oh, he had hey he hit his face boots. WVR, I I question what they're waiting for here. Maybe they're just. So there's two th schools of thought here. You lengthen the game when you're winning in order to demoralize the other team, which is one thing. Or if you're losing, you lengthen the game in order to stretch it out and make the other team work harder. There's two thoughts. Um, I think the former is generally more applicable. And we don't see any wards down for SQ if they actually want to get back into the Cindy Wars. And Valms is just dead again. Oh, tracked. Boom. Nine in a row. There's another kill for Bounty Hunter. Four. Oh, man. Just look at that. That tells a story right there. And that's not sorted by uh, team, people. That's sorted by kills. They ping on the Ancients? I don't really know why. Yeah, go WVR indeed. Uh, they're just melting these guys. Um... And honestly, I can't say enough about it. This bounty hunter is is why they've won this game. I mean, they had great play. I don't want to discount the other players. They've had great plays from everyone. But this bounty hunter has just controlled the game. We see all outer towers down. We see five, well, four, because one's dead. Gathered mid. We take a look at net worth. Uh, <laughs> dropping even further behind. When that, when this Rubik passes this guy, that's when you know it's it's... Not that it's not over, but that's when you know it's really over. Oh, the only problem with the game longer is that means I have to solo cast longer. My voice is going to start hurting. What do you get T after this game? Oh, so we see the Luna top in the chart with 176 last hits. She's got her Manta, she's got her BKB, and she's got an Aegis. They're going to walk right into this. This is going to be probably the last fight of the game, I imagine. A WVR might go down. They are able to get Kit 6. They finally kill that guy. But he's got an Aegis. Uh, Jay melts. Valve melts. Kitsig has an Aegis. Goes in with the ultimate. Trek 2 might go down. His his ult should still be up. We see a buyback from the Crystal Man. We see a stun out. He's dead. And Demigod calls a GG. The Dyer might want to mine their top tower. So, and for fun, Pear Bear does not die. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for game number one. A strong performance from WVR. A not a bad performance from SQ, but they just got caught out. Not enough wards, not enough vision, not enough awareness of the bounty hunter, and it bit them in the ass. Uh, we see uh, the Shadow Blade picked up on Alchemist, which would have been great for initiation, but they were on the back foot so much they couldn't quite do it. So that's going to be it. Uh, we're going to get ready for game number two. Thanks for everyone for watching. I am Have No Pity, and I will see you back in just a second.